Hi, everybody. <laughs> How's it going? Is everyone having a really good Mag West so far? Yeah. So as you may have figured, I'm kind of winging this one. Um, they didn't tell me <laughs> that I came to this. I was like, I wonder who put up that description. So I, I guess I, 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 I hit some sort of qualification for the most forgetful voice actor, because I have chronic amnesia and just forgot that I signed up to do this panel. But I think we're all good here. So who's interested in voice acting? Is this why you showed up to the panel? All right, very nice, very nice. Um, yeah, so I'm here to answer any and all questions that you have about voice acting. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I've loved voice acting for years, naturally. I started by doing voices for my sister in the car while we were waiting for our parents to fill gas. And now I'm doing it somewhat professionally. I've done a little bit of everything. I've done Disney Plus shows, I've done Netflix, I've done anime. I've uh, done video games as of recently. Uh, a mobile game is coming out pretty soon. Um, and the biggest thing um, that all voice actors will tell you right now is that you can actually still apply for voice acting jobs, which is really great, in spite of all the strikes and everything. Um, but it's just audition after audition after audition. And that's a lot of the life of what being a voice actor is. So um, today, I think I'd like to separate some of the content that um, is usually done at these sort of panels by giving you more practical um, you know, actual advice for what you would need to do in order to get a setup at home and for you to actually be able to start auditioning. Because uh, there's a lot of stuff out there. It's pretty easy to get lost. And for me, I basically just started because of the stimmy check. They gave me the <laughs> stimmy check and I used it on a setup, on a home setup, um, somewhat like this. And then you just plug it into the computer and then I just started submitting from there. Because once you get the setup done, uh, as long as it's not USB, you're pretty much good to go. Um, most studios that once they cast you, they'll try to get everything done remotely for you. Um, yeah, uh, any questions and stuff I can answer for there. So it's, it's a bit of a big world. I guess, what are, what are people really interested in here and doing? Are you guys interested in doing dubbing voice acting or are you doing uh, video game voice acting? I assume because like this is uh, MagWest, there's a lot of video game content that you guys want to um, do voices for her. What, what's your main interest? Can I get a show of hands, or does anybody just want to answer? You guys can just shout it out. Uh, just in general, like, what channels do you go through to sit there and get hired, or you know, put yourself out there in the sense that you know, how do I become a voice actor? Okay, yeah. Um, so I think of really great resources until recently is Twitter, which, <coughs> um, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I don't have any uh, personal affection for, for the Musk, but um, it was a really great resource actually for um, finding other voice actors on, on the platform, right? Um, I think a lot of voice actors are uh, really communicative on Twitter particularly. So if you have a favorite one or one that you look up to in particular, I wouldn't say go bother them, but you know you can just like follow their uh, history and they usually tend to like be pretty nice about responding and like posting stuff about like what the, got them in the industry. Um, there's a really great uh, uh, casting call, actual Twitter account, which I'd highly recommend everyone check out. So I will, I will show this one because uh, Risa runs it. Risa's really great. Um, it's called VA Casting Call RT. Uh, voice actor casting call retweet, right? You can just search that one up. And it's got a bunch of indie type uh, casting calls, right? It's got everything from video games to original online animated shorts and stuff like that. You can go on there and just uh, cold apply. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people will come to these panels and tell you, yeah, like, first things first, you want to make sure that you have your acting chops up on par right before you start submitting. Um, sometimes, actually, though, I would advise if you want to just know what it's like to submit, because th the truth is that when you do the acting class, it's going to be a lot different from when you actually go out there and do auditions, right? When you're doing auditions, you're just, you've got to create all that by yourself, right, in your room. And sometimes there's no better way than just to do it. So <laughs> just get on there, and then you can like find something that fits you. Um, there was actually a really great opportunity there recently, which I've tried to recommend friends for. Um, if I don't necessarily fit a role, I'll try to send it to friends. Um, it was like for the X-Men, I think, for like a Marvel exercise app. And I was surprised because it was just public. And, but you can submit for stuff like that just because it's all in this great little Twitter that Risa put together and among many other people. Um, pretty great community. People are retweeting uh, jobs there constantly. You can check that out. Is anyone on there right now? Did anyone manage to find it or like take note of it or something like that? 
If anyone's, I, I think they're doing something with the strike right now. They said we're not going to do anything that is officially something sanctioned by a SAC contract, but everything else was fair game. Um, yeah, so when, I, when I'm short on auditions, I just go through that website. I just kind of put everything on a list. What's due? When's it due? Let me just knock out like five or six of them in the night if I can, and then I don't sleep that night. <laughs> so. VA casting call RT. So, yeah. Also VA casting RT. VA casting RT. It might it might be that. <laughs> so I'm shilling for it in the wrong ways. I'm sorry. Right. Yep, yep. I uh, highly highly advocate for that one. Risa has done a great job compiling a lot of pretty good uh, sources. And the best thing about that too is that when you're applying on that particular chain of um, you know retweets and everything, Risa will tend to put a uh, link to uh, one of the Vo voice over uh, the rate, t uh, rate websites. Yeah. So sometimes they'll be like, name your own rate. And then Risa will also post, this is like a guide for indie projects, right? This is around what you want to ask. So don't undersell yourself. It no, yeah, exactly. It benefits everybody if you kind of keep it to, you know, around the same price. So. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, do you have any questions in particular? Does anybody have something? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you can go up to the mic. Whatever you prefer. It's Sunday. It's okay. Everyone partied last night, right? <laughs> yeah, so um, I have experience auditioning for like music things, and one thing okay. that I notice is that I get really nervous, and I, it gets to my head when I'm like recording anything or auditioning for anything. Like, what tips do you have to just sort of let go and let and 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 let whatever creative potential you might have come out <laughs> mm, yeah yeah definitely loosening up uh i've been in sessions and and suddenly i hear oh the client's on the call oh brother here we go <laughs> I, I, i'll stand up i'll stretch out when i can um for stuff like that um are you talking about just when you're by yourself in the booth and you're you're doing it or are you talking about Um, yeah, that, that definitely comes with just a lot of experience for me. I think um, earlier on, I would spend a lot of time on auditions. And I think at the point that I am now, eventually, just by doing it over time, I've come to trust the skills that I have. And I think the biggest thing is being accepting of whatever take that you put forth, right? The success should not be in whether you booked the gig or not, right? Because there's hundreds sometimes even thousands of people submitting for it, right? Um, the success should be in the fact that you're putting in the work, right, you know, and you should find the gratification out of that. Um, that's the one thing we can help, I think, in this industry is that we can help our own self-improvement. There's not really much else we can help, right? Because casting directors are gonna have their say and their opinion of things, right? You can definitely do your side of the work, which is listen to what they've cast before, see what sort of tones they're looking for, see what sort of sounds they're really in the, like, they're really searching for in that type of project. But beyond that, like, you know, once you submit that audition, you gotta let it go, right? So really just, when you're doing that audition, when you're doing that music thing, right, really embrace it, because that's the moment that you're performing, right? You know, embrace it, like that, that's your moment, right? But once you're done with it, just let it go. You've just gotta, you, you're, you're a color on the metaphorical, you know, paint, like, you know, What's that thing called? What's that? What, Grace, what's that called? It's the, 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 the paint, you know, the, yeah, yeah, that thing. <laughs> my metaphor sounded a lot better in my head. Um, but you're, you're, you're just one of those colors, right? And if they pick you or not, that's fine, because there's another project that hopefully waits for you, as long as you keep trying. At a certain point, you know, you kind of realize that this industry, we're all just a bunch of gambling addicts, right? <laughs> and we're just constantly submitting, trying to see if we get an opportunity. but. Eventually, just with persistence, you'll get there eventually. So, hopefully. Yeah, just tough it out. You got it. Yeah? Question? Oh, well, yeah, there's actually one quote I heard from, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, he did uh, Moulton uh, But it was selection, not rejection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. select someone, they're not rejecting you, you don't select it, so you just keep going. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I had actually a question, kind of a practical one. I've done some voice acting, and I was kind of offered to get back in, and I put together a booth. Uh, practical thing, how do you keep it 
cool because I, I have a booth and I live in Antioch and right, right. Like 105 there. Uh, I can run the AC and it'll keep it, you know, the house cool, but obviously when you the noise, forward, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just curious if you have any insights on that. Mm -hmm. Just a note on your previous thing too. Um, I just sorry, just before we get to the actual practical of having the booth set up and everything. Um, yeah, selection, not rejection. The thing is that when you put out an audition, at least, and you're being heard by a certain casting director, you may not be selected for that project, but that casting director may make a note of you in their head, right? So they can always come back and loop around, and you'll be their person for maybe that particular voice. You weren't a fit for this project, but you might be a fit for this one. As for the booth, um, I was already sweating when you talked about it, because <laughs> it's a real practical problem, and I have definitely sweated my share of buckets during sessions. Um, I would recommend, yeah, in between takes, at least try to like kind of keep it cool or like have a system for you that might work. For me, it's like triple fisting waters. I have like three, I have like two waters, a tea going on at the same time when I'm, when I'm doing a voiceover session. So I'm never short and usually, um, for, so for those of you unaware, a lot of uh, voice acting sessions tend to be in two hour increments, right? They'll usually try to put a break in the middle. A lot of directors and people that work in the industry have been actors too. So they are, they have been in your shoes, they know how you feel. If not, feel free to ask for it um, too. I'm not gonna lie, I have sometimes done sessions without a shirt on. Um, yeah, but it's voice acting, they don't see you. So who cares? Yeah, just you know, whatever works for you, so. All right, so I think um, I will save a few more questions for the end probably. For now, let's talk a little bit about being very practical. Like I said, how do we get that set up? Thank you for the segue for that, right? So this is the first time I think ever in a panel that someone's actually used the mic that they're using as a little demonstration thing. But do you guys know what an XLR cable is right here? Yeah, so this is the, it's the bigger one, right? It's like, so XLR, right? You go to the store and you get uh, one of these mics that connects into an XLR and into a preamp, right? And then that should go into your computer. Um, the reason why is because like for a standard USB mic, right? All those settings are like pre-baked into the USB, right? And the sound floor is going to sound a lot like it, it, it's it's going to be kind of like just like pre um, how do I put it? It's already pre baked into it, right? You won't be able to adjust it as precisely as you would if you fed it into a preamp, right? So the three things, right? It's like you got your mic, you got your preamp, and then you want to feed it into the computer, right? So three basic things that you should eventually have, right? Um, to start out with, USB can be fine. Uh, a lot of the indie projects won't really care for that level of quality, but some do. Um, so if you're just looking to feel out what it's like to get into the industry, right, then you can work with your USB mic and then just play around with it. I mean, I started out with a USB mic too. I had the, the who has like one of those uh, Yeti blue, the, those blue mics, right? You know, it's the really basic ones. They, they, they do the job, right? Whatever gets the job done. The biggest thing is recording space, as you were talking about, right? It's so making sure that you're either in a corner, right, so that way the sound doesn't bounce too much, or you're, you know, at least in an area with some level of treatment, so you're, it's not going crazy. You know, so, oh yes, yeah, question? Closet filled, with pillows. Closet filled with pillows does work. I have seen other voice actors, as well as myself, take the recorder with them when we go on trips, right? And we'll <laughs> make a little pillow fort underneath the blankets so we can record under there so we can get some level of, okay, this doesn't sound terrible, terrible. And yeah, I've, I've submitted for big products that way, but <laughs> mileage may vary. I haven't gotten booked on one of those pillow fort auditions yet, so. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest thing, getting that to feed into the computer eventually, right? Um, at that point, um, do you guys know what a reel is? A reel, okay. No one knows what a reel is. Okay, that's great. Oh, yeah. Guesses are fine. Yeah, uh, submission tape. So, not quite. The submission tape will be the actual edition. Oh, yeah, yeah. Quick guesses? It's like they're kind of choosing a video to download already and kind of taking a sample of what you're doing. Oh, sorry. I have a question there. Yeah. Oh, no. I was asking what a reel is. Yeah, yeah. Do you have an answer for that? Collection of voice samples organized by genre of medium. That's good, yeah. 
So yeah, um, what a reel is, there's no uh, worry by the way, all answers were welcome. A reel is basically, you have five to six voices, you tend to keep it roughly a minute, especially when you're starting, of just kind of showing what you can do, your range, right? Uh, your highs, your lows, your mediums, right? Some character voices in between. Um, I think my reel kind of went a little crazy last time. Uh, I did it myself and <laughs> it packed in like 10 voices in there, so that, that's a little too much though, apparently. You want to keep it to five to six voices generally, so about 10, 10 seconds for each performance. You tend to write your own reels, right? Whatever plays to your strengths. Um, start with your bass voice. You can go really high after that, you can go really low, um, so people can kind of see the range that you have as an actor. Um, yeah, question? Um, hi, so like, you know, right, I'm speaking in my normal voice right now. I'm talking about my really lows right here, right? Or like my really highs up here, right? You know, and I want to do that so then they can see what it sounds like over there. Right. <laughs> so that way you can encapsulate the types of voices you can do, right? Then they can be like, oh, well, we, the medium range is not going to work for this character. Maybe they're high range. Maybe if, so even if you submit something, your audition tape, what, what you were mentioning was actually your audition tape, yeah. right? And they'll give you lines sometimes, they'll give you copy, you'll read those out, you'll submit that. Say you submitted and you picked one, like, you know, submission within like a particular range, wasn't quite a fit for that, but they listen to your reel and they suddenly really like the high one, right? Oh, suddenly the high one works? Maybe they'll call you back and they'll say, hey, can you do that one again? Because we liked your acting, right? We didn't quite feel the actual submission, but your reel, had a really good high voice, right? So can you come back and do the high voice instead? And then you go in there and then you're like, oh yeah, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get you, guy. And then you submit that instead and then they cast you based off that because your reel was strong, had the acting chops right there and showed off that you could do that sort of voice. They pick you for that instead. So um, that's the idea with the reel. So the idea is that eventually, um, and this is why I recommend that you guys just go onto that Twitter and start submitting, right? And still try to your absolute very best, right? Because even if you don't get that, at least you can figure out where your range is, right? And start assembling those pieces. Like you can, a reel is not meant to be like submitted for, for sale or anything like that. You can, you can put audition stuff into the reel so that way people can, can at least see your range there, right? So eventually you hopefully will do, at, if you do, okay look, if you do at least six auditions, and like they're all varied enough performances, you could theoretically put that all into a reel and just get going that way. Um, biggest thing with the reel is to try to make it sound as professionally edited as possible. That means you want sound effects, you want music in the background. Um, you can pay somebody to do that. They, the real professional ones go anywhere from like a thousand to three thousand dollars, so they can be up there. Um, but editing your own reel, especially for independent online projects, completely valid. I would say if you're still trying to feel out the industry like putting one together can work. Um, let's go online, look up other reels. Uh, Matt Mercer's is a really great one. Who knows Matt Mercer from, yeah, everything. <laughs> um, yeah, he has a really great reel sample online, which I kind of based mine off of, but you can listen to that and use that for inspiration. Um, Dee Bradley Baker's obviously got a really great website. Uh, I want to be a voice actor.com where you can actually look at all those uh, other reels that he's done in the past and he'll give you probably a lot more season tips than I can, just about practicality in the industry, right? So, all right. So, do we have anything after that? Do we have any other questions? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, that's the great thing about voice acting, right? And definitely an advantage. It's absolutely not important at all. Um, if you just make a Twitter, you can straight up, like, I, I, there's like a great voice actor from this area. I don't want to mention them by name in case they want to stay anonymous, but they don't even use like an avatar whatsoever. Or just, well, they've never shown their face. They just use like the virtual avatar. And we've been in shows together, right? This is, you'll never see them, but <laughs> they exist. So yeah, you can do this. You can pretty much do this all anonymously. In fact, this industry, um, for this side of it, um, sometimes using an alias is kind of encouraged, so that way, just in case that there's union problems, right, then you're credited as something else, not gonna be as much of a problem then, so in the future, so yeah. Good thinking there, that's thinking in advance. I'm an idiot, I put my face and everything all, on all my stuff, so everyone, everyone knows who I am, so. <laughs> all right, any other questions? All right. <coughs> 
Well, shall we do a little bit of fun stuff then? Shall we have some fun, practical fun? I'm gonna, I'm gonna liberally steal, I'm looking at the camera, I'm gonna liberally steal this from Tony Oliver's uh, panel that he did at Anime Expo, because it was really fun, actually, what he did. He actually had people come up and dub uh, an anime live, and he had like an uh, engineer there uh, prepare everything, so then you can actually dub it to the actual anime. Unfortunately, I was not as prepared. I do not have that, as you can see. Okay. I do not have anything, in fact, but we will make do. We can have some fun anyways, because there's plenty of scripts online that we can read off of and just have fun with. So um, I'd like any brave volunteers to come up. Would anybody be interested in doing a little bit of reading for the room and whatnot? This will help you get over your nerves, you know, as you were saying. So hopefully you might take this opportunity and just embrace it with vigor. Yeah, let's go. Nice, I love it, I love it, I love the fire. Oh yeah, sure, why not? You can come up here. Either or works. Yeah, it's, it's totally fine. Come up here. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, um, let me see. How are we gonna do this? We can look up straight up a script from one of your favorite video games, how about that? Or sure. anything that you like, yeah. Because I think that's the best way to start. It's just like, you know, because I, I also do music too. When I started music, it was, the thing that really got me into it was playing the songs that I liked, right? Yeah. So let's try to do something similar with voice acting, right? You know, is there a character that you particularly resonate with that you want to perform? If you guys can look on your phones right now, right? Maybe find like a list of quotes. You know, there's like a, there's a wiki for famous quotes of a certain character. That could be pretty fun, right? So. And then, um, yeah, we can kind of go through that, I can give you little tips for how to direct that, right? And how to enhance your performance just a little bit. So we'll do that with everyone who's lined up here. I think we have plenty of time to actually do that, so. <laughs> do you want them on the stage or in front of us? Sorry. Um, that's okay, you can, you can be up here. That way you can be on the camera too. Okay. Yeah, let's give you your moment, right? Like I said. In fact, I will, I will, I will move to this one so that way you can sit here. Okay. okay. How about that? You need oh, here? You, yeah, yeah, you can, sit, you can sit there. Yeah, yeah, let's give you your moment. It's about empowering the actor here, and not because we improvised this whole panel. One, two, three, sibilance, sibilance. Okay, uh, let's see if I can find one here. All right. <clears throat> so, if you want to give us a little preamble and background on which character that you're picking right now and looking for. Yeah, I'm still working it out. Yeah. Do you want to have any suggestions? You got Pikachu on your shirt. <laughs> you got any Pokemon Pikachu characters? Ray? Yeah. Yeah, you got any Pokemon characters that you really like? Uh, not so much into that, let me think. Uh, ooh. Mewtwo. Sorry? <laughs> Mewtwo, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, Mewtwo. He does have lines. Right. <laughs> Mewtwo, I recognize. Lugia, yeah, what does Lugia say? Lugia. You're the chosen one, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> You're the chosen one, Ash. Okay, we're looking up Mewtwo. Yeah, we're loading up Mewtwo right now. Any second now. Mewtwo, okay, I choose you. Mewtwo quotes. Mewtwo. Yeah, you don't, okay, so here's the thing about this that I really want you guys to embrace for this uh, exercise. Uh, we have half an hour to do this, by the way. Or I guess we'll, we'll give it like 20 minutes and then we can live the last 15 minutes for a Q&A. Um, I would say that the thing that you guys should refrain from in this case is doing an impression, right? You can do the quotes, but I, I want your take on it, right? I want you to let go of any conception that you've had about how Mewtwo is supposed to sound and do your version of him that you feel like would fit how you would interpret this, right? Where is the emotion for this scene coming from? So the way that I like to break down scenes is very simple, and this is, this is where the really practical part comes from, right? Because voice actors, we actually have it harder than in-person actors, right? We have to create the whole room in our heads, right? When you're in on a set, right, and I've worked on set too, you get props, you get other cast members to bounce off of, you get live energy, you get a live director right there in front of you, right? And all that works in your favor, right? Because you can just use that and then you know start to milk that, right? But when you're recording from home, you have to do all that in your head, right? It's all internal. So what do you do? What, how do I bake that down into something that is tangible and 
I can really that that will that I can connect to and that I can work with. What does the character want in that scene, right? And how are they going to get it, right? Those are the two things, and then that how um, should lead to an action verb for how you're going to play that, right? So say, let me just pick something random entirely because I have, like I said, nothing. Do you? Oh, wait, you have quotes there. Great. Yeah, can I, I got could it. I take a quick peek at that? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do the ones up there. I will do the ones that you're not gonna pick, so that way, um, we're not overlapping. Uh, do you want me to read Giovanni with you, actually? Oh yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really fun, yes, actually. Yes. Let's do that. Let's do that. But oh, let, so let me just do this one, um, for Mewtwo, right? Just as an example, right? So this line is. So this is my power, but what is my purpose, right? Um, very simple line, right? So it's kind of an introspective line. What does he want there? He he truly wants to know what's his purpose, right? So how is he going to get that right? Is he going to ask, right? Is he going to inquisit himself? Or who's, who's, who's he talking to, right? These are all things that you've got to think about in that case. So let's say, so this is my power. But what is my purpose? Um, let me think. Who are we talking to? Are we talking to Ash in this case? Ash looks like a little kid, right? You know, he may not know much. So I'm just going to ask him that. Let me give it a shot. So this is my power, but what is my purpose? Right, just kind of low, I didn't keep it, but then if we were gonna take it to, wait, who created Mewtwo again? He was like uh, Mr. Fuji, right? I Mr. Fuji? Yeah, it's in the game, yeah, I think he, it's, in, it's that in the anime too, because there's like a prequel movie beforehand, right? So let's say it's Mr. Fuji, <clears throat> and he's seen all these other clones of him, right? Let's just pick, like, to rage instead, right? So this is my power, but what is my purpose? Right. So then you, you pick that action verb, and you try to play that a little differently. It wasn't quite perfect either, but, you know, you, you, at least you get the point of what you're trying to do is, like, you, you find a twist. You're going to take direction like that when you're doing a session too, right? Uh, directors will tend to direct you. How can can you play it a little differently? Can you give me like a little more rage with that, or can you really ground that performance in some sort of emotion there, right? So that's kind of how you work towards that. Um, does that make a little sense? Does anyone have any questions in regards to that? Or that was the quickest crash course for acting that you'd ever need. But seriously, that that's kind of all you need sometimes. Like if if you get too much input, sometimes it might overcomplicate it. So just try to boil it down for yourself with that simple goal. So what's it again, number one? What's your goal, right? Two, how are you gonna get it? And then three, pick that action verb for how you'll play it, right? So that's it, all right. So let's try that right now with uh, this scene right here. We have a Mewtwo and Giovanni scene. Yeah. Right, so who do you wanna read? I'll do Mewtwo. You wanna do Mewtwo? Okay, great. Can you put it down in the center so oh, that sorry, we can I both read? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I already memorized it. All right. Um, yeah, don't, oh, also voice actors, we don't memorize anything. <laughs> We're cheating. <laughs> memorize what? Who is it again? Yeah, I know, what's memorizing? Yeah, you can take that water if you need it. Oh, no, uh, I just leave that out of the way. Okay, no, that's great. It's okay. great. All right. All right. So um, pick what do you want out of that scene, right? What's your action verb? Think about that right now. You don't have to share that with us. That's just for you, but just uh, have that in mind. All right. You good? Yeah. Okay. Whenever you want to start, sure. you're going. That cannot be. You said we were partners. We stood as equals. <laughs> you were created by humans to obey humans. You could never be our equal. Uh, humans may have created me, but they will never enslave me. This cannot be my destiny. Stop this, now! I wasn't born a Pokemon. I was created. And my creators have used to betray me. So I stand alone! Great job. Great work, great work. Boom, close the block, Dory. <laughs> that was great. Iconic scene. Yeah. I think you really actually nailed it. You, you, you kind of took that advice to heart, right? Yeah. What were, if I may ask, like, what, was, what was your goal in that? Well, case? starting out, it's like, yeah, he's working with Giovanni yeah. to Yes, free, and now he's just sudden betrayal. Yeah, right. Giovanni jerk face, yeah, like you yeah, betrayal and sadness, like, we were buddies. Yeah, you, re you really hit it so that way we could really feel that intensity of that, of that sort of pain, right? Yeah. I think the one thing that what directors might note if you're doing that in a session is probably to dial it back a little. Okay. If your gain's a little too much, 
you might have to think yeah. about longevity of it. I mean, this is not a bad thing. That was a great performance, by the way. But it's just for te technicality, if this was a session, right? If he's too loud and he's blowing out the mic, oh, we're going to have to do that yeah. again. And you're going to think about, OK, suddenly, that was a great performance, right? Thank you. But now you're going to have to do that for five to 10 minutes, because mm. we have to dial down the, <laughs> the knob a little bit, right? The mixer's right over there. You have to dial that down, and then you might have to redo it. So think about doing it in a way that can also, I mean, that was really good, right? right? You can't really half-bake anything in voice acting, because you need to give it your all. But also think about if you can do this in a way that might restrain it a little bit and yeah. kind of build up to that moment. Because you did yell in the second one, and then you can build up to that uh, final moment. So that, that could work, too. But great work, great work. What was your name again? Joe. Joe, great job, Joe. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, who do we have? All right, step right up. You can go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know what character you're doing. All right. Yes, rocking the fanny pack. I just watched Everything Everywhere all once again yesterday, so, what yeah. <laughs> That's a $20,000 fanny pack. It went on eBay for, no, like the auction for that much, like from that, from that movie at least. I don't know. It's a nice green one, though. I like Green's my favorite color, so that's good. Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah, um, this particular role. Oh, yeah, what's your name first? Oh, hi. I'm Elizabeth. Good to meet you, Elizabeth. So, um, the lines that I'm doing, uh, I'm just going to go over the first three. But um, this is from World of Warcraft. Back in Shadowlands, there's a character named Sire Denathrius. And his nickname in the video game was Sire Daddy. So he's a fan favorite. And so I figured I'd just go and give a go at his lines. OK. Um, do you need me to read against you for anything? Mm, if you want to do Ramornia. OK. Yeah. So some context, this closer. is the fight against him and the heroes jump into the room where he's at, and he's um, like talking against them, being like, oh, look. All right. So and who's Ramornia? Ramornia is a magical sword who's bloodthirsty. Oh, OK. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Look, Ramornia, these daring rebels dare preserve or persevere every obstacle put before them. It seems we have little choice but to surrender. Have a better answer, Master. Let me carve them up instead. <laughs> hmm. Now there's a thought. We could flay these petulant, small-minded creatures and use their bones to pave the path for our ascension. What to do? What to do? Please, Master. It's been so long since I cut into living flesh. <laughs> Let me skewer them, slice them, slash them, vivisect them, cut ribbons from there. Pace yourself, Ramonia. Rushing one's work is so unflattering. And I think I'd like to stop there. Okay, great work, great work. <laughs> great job, great job, Elizabeth. So, a um, few notes. I think that it, you did a really good job at playing the opposite of this character, right? You know, because obviously you have a bloodthirsty sword on your hands, right? Um, if I may ask, what did you pick for your goal? What was your action verb there? So, as a World of Warcraft player, and getting raffle stomped by Sire Daddy for like three months, <laughs> I heard the lines over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> so frustration, I imagine. Well, not really. He's Sire Daddy. <laughs> getting like stomped by him isn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, let me think. Can we... Um, so, I, I guess... You did a really good job with the accent, right? Um, I think you were kind of focused on that. Can we try to play that uh, scene again, actually? Oh, sure. Um, so. Let's see what we can ground this in, right? Because I'm looking for a performance that kind of rings a little, uh, like, even more authentic than what you already presented beforehand. You did a great job, at, I think, at, at, at the first layer. What, what do you think would be good as your goal here? So you're, you're trying to, you're trying, you know, it's almost like you're trying to explain, or you're, you're very calm in the scene, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know. You probably know context better than me in this case, right? He is super calm. Like, okay. the only time he loses his shit is when, like, you're killing him. And he's like, no, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what's your goal in this case? Um, you're, you're pointing out these rebels, right? And um, you're, you're kind of restraining the sword almost, right? Um... Yes, like pacing her because okay. like you're totally cool with her like going out at the heroes and like slashing them up. Okay, but like also not like doing it instantly. Okay, restrain me then. Like, like that, that should be your action verb. Like play that whole scene, 
except try to restrain me. You're holding me back, right? Okay, yeah, let's get you're that. Keeping me down. Let's let's give this one more go. I think you got this. All right, from the top. Yes. All right. Look, Ramonia, these daring rebels have persevered through every obstacle put before them. It seems we have little choice but to surrender. <laughs> I have a better idea, Master. Let me carve them up instead. <laughs> hmm. Now there's a thought. We could flay these petulant, small-minded creatures and use their bones to pave the path for our ascension. What to do? What to do? Please, Master. It's been so long since I cut into living flesh. <laughs> Let me skewer them, slice them, slash them, vivisect them, cut ribbons from there. Pace yourself, Ramonia. Rushing one's work is so unflattering. That was good, yeah. Did you feel that there was, it was a, a little bit more grounded in the way that you played that, or? A little bit, like repetition, and then also, I think, thinking of it more as a conversation than just focusing on the action. Right, right, yeah. When you repeat it over and over, you kind of get into that zone and you'll eventually be able to just like kind of express yourself freely after that. So that, that's really what you're working to. Great work. Awesome. Great work. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. Thank you. All right, who do we have next? Next victim. <laughs> oh, you're just being a gentleman there, aren't you? <laughs> You got it. Come on. Well, I mean, what better way than to learn how to get rid of? Yeah, you're gonna learn right here, right now. This is actually no pressure at all. You should have seen those people over the Anime Expo stage. They had that open audition, and the stage was cold. It was dark, and there was like hundred people. Yeah, I was there too. Yeah. I was on that stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you there. Yeah. It was cold and dark. Dark and yeah. Did you audition? Yeah, I was on the stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you did you get into the finals or? No. Oh, <laughs> it was hard though. It was it was like random drawing. Everyone's it, you could feel the anxiety in the room, right? I felt it. Yeah, I know. It was like is is this mad? I didn't I didn't go up thankfully. So. <laughs> but here we're we're it's a safe room. We're all learning, right? You know, I'm still learning from you guys. So. Yeah. All right. So why don't you introduce yourself? Let us know what character you're doing. Yeah, so um, my name is Pomai, uh, pronouns are they them. I am, I don't know, I have no idea what I'm doing and I am just trying this for the first time. And I, like, I find enjoyment in doing like my D&D &D characters and that's oh, the only okay. reason why, yeah. well, that's one of the reasons why I was like really excited coming here because I'd be like, oh, might as well learn something about it. So. Right, oh, that's cool. So uh, your, your name is Pomai, sorry? Pomai, yeah. Pomai, okay, great. And uh, the character I'm doing, if this ad decides to disappear, is um, Quarrel from Hollow Knight. Um, Quarrel from, oh, okay. Uh, he, I thought he was a really cool character, and um, I won't spoil anything, but everything was about this game is awesome, so <laughs> figured I'd, I'd pick something from there. Um, I'm just going to read the dialogue from when you first meet him, I guess, <coughs> and then see how this goes. Okay, put my... First off, let's breathe. Let's breathe three times. Okay, right? <laughs> We're gonna do it together. We're gonna do it together, all right? We can breathe with him, okay, everyone? You good? Yeah, good. All right, okay, so your body language is kind of tight too. Just loosen up. Just sit back a little bit. Just sit back, relax. Okay. D&D &D session. We're doing a D&D &D session right now, okay? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're with a friend here. You're with a bunch of friends here, yeah. in fact, right? So, yeah, yeah, come on. Give him a round of applause. All right, all right, all right. So, um, is this a scene that's? Uh, so this yeah. is a scene. This is really in the early, in, uh, in the beginning of the game. You okay. walk into this. Um, it's called the the Temple of the Black Egg, I think. Uh, you basically walk in and you see Coral just staring at it. And when you talk to him, this is what you, this is sort of the dialogue that you get to read, and it's just. Okay, it's just solo, right? Yeah. It's just okay, solo. great. Yeah, perfect. Let's yeah. give it a listen then. Yeah, take your time. Start whenever you feel like it. You got this. Ah, hello there. How delightful to meet another traveler on these forgotten roads. You're a short one, but you got a strong look about you. I'm Quirrell. I have something of an obsession with uncharted places. This ancient kingdom holds many fascinating mysteries, 
and one of the most intriguing of them are standing right before us. A great stone egg lying in the corpse of an ancient kingdom. And this egg, is it warm? It certainly gives off a unique air. Can it be opened? There's strange marks all over it. I do so love a good mystery, and who knows what other marvels are lie deep, oh, excuse me, and who knows what other marvels lie deep, even deeper below us. Great work, great work. Kalai, you did great. That was great. All right. So, don't, you, did, you did good, but I'm gonna make you do it again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, I think you did a really great job for a first read. Um, I think you can hear the intonations from you know those D and D sessions really play. You really made those words fly, right? Okay. Double down on that. What do you mean? Go go even harder if you can. Like you're you're you're. It's it's kind of like an explanation, right? Almost. It's it's almost like you're describing this fantasy world, right? The kind of the kind of the thing that I was imagining when you were like, because you talked about trying to think about the the purpose of yeah, your right. Mm -hmm. So I was sort of thinking like he's he acknowledges and then says I have a. You know, I, I like traveling, and then just kind of goes off thinking about this thing that he's looking at again right. before snapping back. And that was kind of what I was going for, but I also don't know if that came off at all. Okay, he's snapping back. Not or? snapping back, but like it turns into a ramble. It turns into a ramble, exactly. Okay, okay. So that 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 you can play, right? That I can. To play. ramble, right? You know, you're rambling, right? Rambling, so. just kind of let it, just kind of. Let it. Okay. Come out. Is that what you're? Let's try. That was what I was imagining, yeah, that, but yeah. then it didn't come out that way. <laughs> that, that's okay. That's okay. Because you were reading it for the first time anyway, so I don't expect like you know. I mean, I I I, I always also take a lot of times to get before I get the take I want to submit anyway. So yeah. Let's build up to that ramble. How about that? Sure. Because that way, so the way I structure it in my head, and I think I mentioned it before when with your performance, right, uh, Joe, is that I try to build up to that moment, right, where in your case, where Mewtwo yeah. kind of blows up there, right? Yeah, so, so. yeah, we should have really had you read that one again. I'm sorry, but you did great the first time. I don't want you to throw out your voice entirely. Um, so let's try to build up to the ramble. What I mean is that take your time at the beginning, kind of start very elegantly, right? And then let the panic kick in, you know okay. what I mean? Ra <laughs> like, then, then just kind of let you feel what, whatever you're feeling now and then just kind of use that, right? Sure. Let's, sure. let's give that a shot. All right. I, I think we can hear. It. Yeah. In fact, I invite the audience to close their eyes. Yeah, I was closing my eyes at the beginning. Let's, let's, right. let's give that a shot, okay? Aww. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Hello there. How delightful to meet another traveler on these forgotten roads. You're a short one, but you've got a strong look about you. I'm Quarrel. I have something of an obsession for uncharted places. This ancient kingdom holds many fascinating mysteries, and one of the most intriguing of them is standing right before us, a great stone egg lying in the corpse of an ancient kingdom. And this egg, is it warm? It certainly gives off a unique air. Could it be opened? There are strange marks all over it. I sure do love a good mystery. Oh. And, and who knows what other, oh, I'm sorry. That, 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 one, that one didn't come out right. Um, can it be opened? There are strange marks all over it. I sure do love a good mystery. And who knows what other marvels lie even deeper below us. Good. I don't know how to end that. It's OK. It's OK. Actually, <laughs> you're going to hate me for this. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Could I could I actually see that uh, script from you real quick? Yeah, I no, you, you did good. You did good. You did good. Like, you're fine. You're fine. There you go. Okay. I can make it so I'm, you can see it. I'm I'm not trying to torture you. I promise. No, but no, let no. let me let me help you identify like sure. the beat change right here because there's a m particular moment where you can sort of feel that this character is s they start getting really excited about something they're talking about, yeah. right? And what happens is that you start very elegantly, but then when you start talking about something you're excited about, right, you know, then you, you kind of yeah. start losing it, and then your pitch kind of goes all over the place, right, a little bit, right? You can, See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rambling, but at the same time, he's like examining this thing, so I didn't know where to put the pauses in it, because he's, you know, he's standing in front of this big, giant egg that, that, that seems to be radiating heat, but I don't really know, we don't know anything about yeah, it. Yeah, right. right. You can, yeah, you pick, yeah, that's the choice that you make. You can pick where you're going to start getting excited, right? And you can speed it up, right? You know, 
for me, I would pick this moment right here, and, and this egg, is it warm? It, it certainly gives off a unique air. Can it be open? There, there, there are strange marks all over it. I, I, I do so love it. A mystery. And, and who knows what other marvels lie even deeper. So yeah, yeah. So you even kind of like, yeah. so kind of like not even acknowledging the person who's speaking the, the thing that's being right. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of being like, yeah, that's a great that's way to, yeah, you, that's a great way to internalize keep, it. Keep, yeah, keep, okay, yeah, so you're like, you're talking to us at first, and then suddenly all your attention gets directed towards the egg because now you're like obsessed with it, right? Yeah, so yeah, you can, you, that's where you, that's where a beat change happens, where your action verb should change, right? It should be from to explain, right? To obsess, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can try that. Sure. Can you give us that one more time? Sure. I, I think you're getting I more can, comfortable. This is, this is I good. I can do that. You got it. You yeah. got it. You got it. Uh, Wait, one more time. You got it. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That's good. No, that was good. That's good. That's more energy, too. I actually yeah. like that. That's good. Hello there. How delightful to meet another traveler on these forgotten rounds. You're a short one, but you've got a very strong look about you. I'm Coral. I have something of an obsession with uncharted places. This ancient kingdom holds many fascinating mysteries, and one of the most intriguing of them is standing right before us. A great stone egg lying in the corpse of an ancient kingdom. And this egg, is it warm? It certainly gives off a unique air. And can it be opened? There's strange marks all over it. I sure do love a good mystery. And who knows what other marvels are even deeper below us. A little better? Yeah, it was better. Yeah, there you go. You got it. All right, great job, Pamai. You did great. <laughs> Don't run off stage. You got to give us a bow. <laughs> great work, great work, great work. Well, thank you. Okay, we got another person, right? You got one more? While that person is setting up, uh, could I point out a fact or a thing about the making up something, even if you don't initially know what yeah, you're going with Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Um, so going back to Sire Denathrius, and I know I'm a fangirl, but the voice actor for that, yeah. um, his character was originally going to get killed, um, basically as soon as it was introduced. Okay. But because the voice actor did his own interpretation on what the character was supposed to be mm -hmm. and did so well of it, um, the original vision that the creators had for him got completely changed because it's like, oh no, Sire Daddy is here. We can't kill him. Mm -hmm. So right. sometimes just making up something and doing your own take on it uh, will be different and might even create more vision for the creators than they originally intended. Right, right. So that's really great input. Um, you, you sometimes go off the character description, right? But once you try to inhabit that character and you start trying to understand where that character is coming from, your opinion can straight up differ from what the directors have in mind for that character, right? In that case, they probably had a really strong opinion about where that character's path would go. It's more of a stubborn character, I imagine, or like somebody who has an air of authority to them, right? <laughs> he stayed up here. But um, yeah, no, originally he was just going to be a bit of a generic, like, vampire type right, fellow. Yeah. Um, but then he brought this whole, like, um, mystery, I think. To, no, or? he brought the sire daddy to okay. it. Like, they did not imagine him being so, like, you know, spank me kind of fellow. <laughs> and, um, and the voice actor brought that, and they're like, we love him. We can't <laughs> kill him. He's too good. <laughs> So right. that's what the voice actor brought to the table. Right, right, exactly. So I mean, that that's, uh, goes into another point, which is never underestimate your contributions as a voice actor in this too. It's like you can definitely br what you bring is unique, right? It's they're looking for a type. They're not necessarily they don't necessarily know why that is until they hear you, right? So have confidence in what you have and what you can bring to the table, right? <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks for also uh, bumping up the rating of this panel from uh, PG to uh, something <laughs> higher. <laughs> All right, can you introduce yourself? Sorry about that. Howdy, I'm uh, Leon. Hello. Hi, Leon. Howdy. Hello. Um, you've played Metal Gear Solid, right? It's okay. It, it's, been, it, it's, been, it's been forever since I played it, but it's just... It's just I'll play the remake, I swear. <laughs> uh, a piece of dialogue between liquid and, and solid. Mm -hmm. um, nice. I will read 
liquid. You can be solid snake. I'm sure you can do pretty yeah. good David Hater. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I love David Hater's voice. Colonel. All right. So yeah, j um, let's let's go for it once, and then we'll we'll work from there. Yeah, let's go read it. <clears throat> so the snakes finally come out of his hole. Are you ready now, my brother? Why are you calling me brother? Who the hell are you? I'm you. I'm your shadow. What? Ask the father that you killed. I'll send you to hell to meet him. Nice, nice. Great first read. Great first read. You brought that energy for sure. You brought that energy. I do a lot of kind of monologuing out of boredom <laughs> by myself. Fair enough. Me too. When I'm waiting for the plane. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. So how can we how can we work on this? So I, I think that the voice was there. The voice was there. Um, can we go with a thought of the intent again? Right. You know, what did you pick for your goal here? Right. What was? I, if I remember correctly, in that scene, liquid is. I, I, I want to say it's right when they're fighting on top of 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 Rex. It's it's been forever since since I've played this game. But but Liquid is, Li Liquid's whole thing is that he has this inferiority complex because when this game was written, nobody understood how how genes work too. Who worked on it, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So Liquid has an inferiority complex. He he wants to prove himself to be better than Snake, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is kind of like the badass introduction, you know? Mm -hmm. what I mean. Uh, let me see. How do we play it? Ask the father. So he, is he? He's looking for revenge, right? It's, More or less. It's complicated. He wants. He wants <sighs> to prove himself to be better because he thinks he got the inferior genes, and that snake got the superior genes. It, okay. It's very yeah. convoluted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's strip that all away. Like, okay. forget all that right now. What's your goal? What's the verb? You know, keep it simple. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you want out of me in this scene? Right. You want to prove I'm be you're better than me. Right. Right. Um, how do how do you do that? Right. What's what's what, what's the way that you're gonna do that? Maybe, maybe add just a little bit more aggression, kind of like maybe like he's really starting to go like losing it. Maybe. Well, yeah. See that that's the, this is why I'm asking for the action verse specifically, okay. right? Because aggression can go any which way, right? right? It can be. It's just kind of out into the ether, right? But. Um, are you trying to intimidate me? Or I, I, I guess, I guess. Yeah. Kind See, of you can like intimidate me, right? right? Aggression is just kind of, it's kind of a loose concept, right? Mm -hmm. you, could, you could play that any which way, but you want something a little more pointed and more direct, somewhere more directly to channel your energy in this case. So let's try, yeah, try to intimidate me, right? And I'm basically trying to figure out who the heck you are, right? So okay. I'm, <coughs> yeah. All right, let's give it one more shot. So the snakes finally come out of his hole. Are you ready now, my brother? Why are you calling me brother? Who the hell are you? I'm you. I'm your shadow. What? Ask the father that you killed. I'll send you to hell to meet him. Great work, great work. Better, a lot more pointed, right? A lot more pointed. Great work, great work. All right. Is there any other takers? I think that was it. That was a great performance, so. Uh, I think people want to go. People yeah, still want to no, go. No, yeah, thank no, you. Let's keep go. it going then. Yeah, we still got time. We got you have five minutes, right? Yeah. I still yeah. Oh no. Oh, just right here. Oh, okay. Oh, but. Um, yeah. Let's have folks from this side of the room come. Yes. Let's just do one read for each of these people because they kind of we kind of got the hang of it now, right? Just have your script ready. Let's just go for it. You know, let's give everyone a shot. Hi. Hello. Oh, I love this shirt. Yeah. I love throwing girl the time. It's yeah. so fun. Oh my gosh, that show is so yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> from another show, I'm doing. Um, a oh, introduce yourself. And, oh, yeah. hi. I'm. My name is Jenny. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna be doing uh from Avatar: The Last. Oh Air. yes. <laughs> now you're speaking my language. One of the greatest shows ever. How many times I've seen that? I can't even count. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh yes. All right. Who are you playing? Um, I'm gonna be Katara. Okay. Um, this is when they're um going to Aang's home for the first time, and Aang doesn't quite realize what has happened oh, yeah. in the last one hundred years. Genocide. Yeah. Lovely in a children's show. Yeah. Yeah. Never forget that. So if you want to start All right, so one. we're just going to read up from this page? Yeah. All right. OK, we're just going to go for one read because we got a few more folks to get through. Yeah. And that's it. All right, three, two, one. The Patola mountain range. We're almost there. Aang, before we get to the temple, 
I, I want to tell you about the airbenders. What about them? Wait, well, uh, sorry. Uh, well, I just want you to be prepared for what you might see. The Fire Nation is ruthless. They killed my mother, and they might have done the same to your people. <laughs> just because no one's seen an airbender doesn't mean the Fire Nation killed them all. They probably escaped. I know it's hard. Uh, I know it's hard to accept. <laughs> Great work. <laughs> you brought the, the motherly quality to Katara that, you know, every fan knows from that show. So great work, great work. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming up, Jay. Oh, yeah. All right. Who's next? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, gosh. Great show. All right. Uh, you'll be Alistair. Oh. All right, can you uh, introduce yourself and just let us know uh, sure. what the scene is? Um, I'm doing, I think, uh, from Dragon Age Origins. Oh, uh, sorry, introduction. Maybe. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Tony, and um, it's the first time doing this kind of thing. OK. But um, Woo! Yeah, actually, like, well, you know, I'm tr uh, transgender, and having to learn to control my voice, mm -hmm. that was a it made me very so, you know, aware of the inflections and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I'm, see, I'm seeing how that can be applied to this sort of thing. Okay, yeah, let's give it a shot. I think you got this. Right. Yeah, give us a rundown for the scene really quick. Okay, so Alistair and Morgan, they're, they're sort of kind of flirty. Okay. Um, but uh, they're, they're having a dialogue sort of in a, in a camp okay. on, on, during their downtime. Sounds good. So go for it. Thank you. All right, who am I? I'm reading Alistair. You're, you're Alistair, yeah. Why do you always go on about how stupid I am? I'm not stupid, am I? Well, if you need to ask the question. <laughs> because it hurts my manly feelings, you know. All one of them. Then I'll be sure to write you an apology once all of this is over. I was educated by the Chantry. I studied history. They don't make stupid Templars. Then I must have been mistaken. I'm very impressed. No, you're not. You're not even listening to me. My, my, you, you are much smarter than you look after all. Your Chantry must have been very proud. Great work. I think it came through, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, so I think play up the flirtatiousness even more a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I, I'm not quite sure about how my character feels just because I don't think I understood enough context there. Was he flirting back, supposedly, or? I think he was kind of, he was like a, being a little bit hard-headed yeah. a little bit. While it was more of like a one-sided like -sided thing, uh, at least until that part of the relationship develops. So yeah, yeah. yeah I think I, I, was, I was trying to figure out, like, is he, is he flirting back? Because those lines yeah, don't kind of feel like he's flirting back. But it yeah, you can, you can really do that, is, like flirt really even harder, like kind of do a good contrast to that. But great work, great work. Okay. We have one more, we have one more, we have one more. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We have one minute. We can do it, we can do it. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. Great work, Tony. You sound great. Yeah, there's, there's the, the great thing about this industry too is that there's a lot more like, you know, opportunities for just everyone now. There's like definitely casting calls I've seen that are specifically for transgender people, so don't worry. There's like plenty of casting calls that I think you'll fit, so. All right, let's get, we go ahead and introduce yourself. We'll introduce the scene. Hi, uh, my name's Gerardo. I, we're going to be doing a scene from Persona 4. Mm. Okay. It's one of my favorites. Uh, can you read for Yosuke? Yosuke, okay. Right here. Pretty much dangerous situation. You don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Okay, sounds good. All right. Let me just get it here so I, <laughs> I, I forgot my glasses. That's all good, yeah. You can borrow mine if you need. <laughs> so this one right here? Right here, yeah. Whoa, the difference is like night and day. With these on, it's like the fog doesn't exist. Yeah, that'll help you walk through the fog. Well, I've been here for a long time, so you can rely on me. Uh, uh, but I can only show you where the place is. You guys gotta defend yourselves. What happened to relying on your... The, there better not be any monsters, you understand? We brought weapons, but I mean, they're more for show. We just got here. If it's so dangerous, why don't you do something instead of relying on us? Uh, 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 no, no! Uh, I got no muscles. Oh, 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 oh. I'll give you moral support from a safe distance. How does that sound? <laughs> Great work. Great work. 
And for the record, I think you should have been in top five for that contest. Great oh, work. <laughs> I just wanted an opportunity to play with somebody. Yeah, today. it was really fun. Great job, great job. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending the panel. Um, and, yeah, for letting me on stage in the first place. <laughs> so there you go. I'm glad everyone got an opportunity to read. Was this helpful to you? Do you have any questions? Yeah. You have one more? We have one more? Do we have time for it? Can we do it? The next panel is in, uh, is in 30 minutes. Ah, that can wait. Get up here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. If you run the clock a little, I won't mind. <laughs> Sorry, loving audience at home. We're going to give you more content. <laughs> so, darn it. <laughs> Gosh darn it. <laughs> Didn't sign my waivers. Ooh, very nice shirt. What is this? Is this a Berserk? Yeah. Yes, very nice. So, uh, my name's Alex, um, okay. and I'm a huge Warhammer nut. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the intro to, it's the intro cutscene before the main screen of Mechanicus. Okay. And... <laughs> From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind cling to the flesh as if it will not decay and fail you. One day the crude biomass you call a temple will wither and will, you will beg my kind to save you. But I am already saved for the machine is immortal. All right. Woo! Great first read, great first read. I'm gonna give you two tips. This is a little more practical because that was oh, a great yeah. read to start, right? One, I'm like closer, sorry. These oh, this is absolutely my, yeah. my first time trying this. The, fi the 58s are like up here. You gotta oh. be like kissing the mic on these ones. These are stage mics that usual people use for like singing and stuff like that. These are like the most oh, popular mics for that. You gotta be up here, it's okay. No, no, oh, no, no okay. worries to apologize, it's just, um, mic control and figuring out where you have to be for which mic will oh, be important yeah. whenever you learn that eventually. And um, one more, uh, I think, just tip over. I think you had the great intent already. I don't yeah. think I, I need to give you any tips on that front. But I think if you want to, just enjoy it and chew the scenery even more. Because this is like the lore bit, right? This yeah. is the intro, right? You're taking us to a new world. Take your time with it. Just, just slow down. Really milk the scenery. Let's try that one more time. Is that sure. okay? Yeah, let's go for it. Get it real up, nice and close. Yeah, you got it. From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind cling to your flesh as if it will not decay and fail you. One day, the crude biomass you call a temple will wither and you will beg my kind to save you. But I am already saved, for the machine is mortal. I was getting lost in the sauce at the end there. That was really good. Yeah, I think you definitely got better as you went. Great work, yeah. great work, great figuring work. Out that temp figuring out that tempo is yeah, a bit yeah. weird. And that's the thing about auditioning too. I'm only giving you guys like maybe like two or three reads here at most, but you can really take your time and, you know, pick different ways to do it and send in the best take that eventually. Like if you you got to listen to it back though. That's oh, the yeah. thing. It's like having having the ear to like listen to your own performance and be like, which one do I send in? Uh, too many takes, right? That's that's part of what hopefully this will help you develop it. So yeah. great work, great work. <laughs> All right, do we have any more readers? Any more? Yes. Any last calls? Closing time. Oh, uh, sorry. Here you went, Tony. <laughs> oh, God. I know who. It's too early for character. So, Thank uh, you. Thank you. Yep. So I'm Andrew. Hi, Andrew. The only kind of performing I've ever done is karaoke. Oh, there uh, we go. Or uh, voices at my D&D games. Uh, and so yeah, yeah. something you said earlier was, uh, try not to do, do impressions for the lines that we're doing. So I chose something that didn't have voiced lines. It's okay. from a, just a text-based um, uh, game. Uh, Baldur's Gate. Oh, yes. First from yes. back in the day. Mm. So right. um, for this one, I was thinking there's like three ways that I could go about it, either like uh, sardonic or like really cold and angry. But I think I'm going to go for uh, just uh, at the edge of my rope. 
Okay. I have had my fill of riddle-asking, quest-assigning, insult-throwing, pun-hurling, hostage-taking, iron-mongering, smart-arsed fools, freaks, and felons that continually test my will, metal, strength, intelligence, and most of all, patience. If you've got a straight answer anywhere in that bent little head of yours, I want to hear it pretty darn quick, or I'm going to take a large, blunt object, roughly the size of Elminster and his hat, and stuff it lengthwise into a crevice of your being so seldom seen that even the denizens of the Nine Hells themselves wouldn't touch it with a 20-foot rusty halberd. Have I made myself perfectly clear? Great work. Great work, Andrew. You could have fooled me there. <laughs> All right. It was impressions, right? So hey, yeah. I, hey, that's where I got my start, too. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope everyone had a good time. Did you guys have a good time? Did you guys learn something? For those of you that are still here, this is a lot more than my last panel. Uh, I'll probably be doing another one at Kinyobicon like next month or something like that. But if you guys want information on that, you guys go and feel free to follow me on uh, Twitter, Instagram. I'm Cinepresto, C-I-N-E-P-R-E-S-T-O. Um, yeah, and if you have any more questions there, feel free to reach out to me there. I'll respond if you have any more voice acting questions. And always happy to talk voiceover stuff. Um, I personally love this industry. I love talking about the story that I got my mom a voiceover job, too. I'm very proud of that one. So she has like a short film out that won several awards at film festivals. But I truly believe this is, uh, you know, the sort of job and the sort of profession that anyone can get into. Um, takes a lot of effort, like anything else in life. But it's absolutely worth it because it's just provided me so many opportunities and just given me such a great avenue to express myself. So I hope that you guys were empowered by this too, um, and you guys learned something useful. Uh, I hope to see you guys at the next one, and please enjoy the rest of your Mag West. Thank you.